Hello everybody here is hoping you have had a great start to the new year. My name is Superman Duanzira. Welcome to 2011 and welcome to our very first edition of the program Token Business in the year of the Lord 2011. We start the show this year on a spiritual note. Hello everybody and thank you so much for joining us on the very first program this Thursday in January of 2011, a brand new, new year and I hope you had a wonderful holiday and I want to welcome you to the program Talking Business. Let me also say welcome to the program, my guest tonight. Let me start by uh, Pastor uh, Petunia Chiriseri, she is co-founder and senior pastor of uh, His Presence Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us on Talking Business. Thank you, Super. And also, let me say welcome to a familiar face on the program. Uh, you know him. He's been here a couple of times. He's uh, uh, from the Redeemed House of God, Pastor Nico Hizu. Great pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you very much. And, and there's no guessing why I've invited two uh, uh, people of God onto the show, the very first show for 2011. Pastor, what is in store for Zimbabweans, for the Zimbabwean business person, for the entrepreneur this 2011? You know, Zimbabwe has a prophetic word over its life. And uh, the prophetic word is that Zimbabwe is the breadbasket, will be the breadbasket of Africa. And Zimbabwe is the jewel of the nations. And uh, the recent discovery of the diamonds and uh, um, all the policies, indig indigenization policies and uh, empowerment uh, policies, black empowerment policies, I think are just setting the stage for Zimbabweans to become the champions that Zimbabweans have become. I truly believe, you know, the suffering that Zimbabwe went through the last 10 years, it was preparation time. And I believe that now the stage is set for the Zimbabwean champion to arise. You know, champions are born in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. We've gone through the crisis. I believe now the crowning glory is coming. And uh, this I, could be the year. This could, th this could be the year. I, I strongly believe, you know, we've learned many lessons, you know, as Zimbabweans and, uh, it is time, you know, the resilience, you know, the determination, the, you know, the tenacity, you know, the bulldog type anointing yes. <laughs> that, we, <laughs> that we exhibited yeah. during the, you know, the last few years, not just to survive, but to succeed. I believe 2011, you know, now that we are here, it is, uh, it is time for the giant to arise. The sleeping giant, you know, it's time for it to arise. Okay. Pastor Nick, what's your take, 2011? Um, God has already told me that uh, this is the new year of a higher level. And you can never go higher in anything unless you first of all find out that you have exhausted the level where you have been. I believe that this stage is set for Zimbabwe to step into a higher dimension. And that higher dimension is, is a, what I call entrepreneurial independence. In the sense that we are, we've received our political independence about uh, in 1980, but this time around the economic independence has just started. This is the period that we are looking at trying to break down the mindset of thinking that uh, entrepreneurship or prosperity is uh, scheduled or appointed or reserved for a just minute few. We are believing God that this is the year that God will start what I call the even distribution of wealth. That God is lifting people up from that level of having not enough or not having anything to the level where we can look back and say, okay, now I can see why God has made me go through what I've been through in the past few years, and I can see why God chose me to be born in Zimbabwe. So I know that 2011 has a lot of promises for everybody, the, 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 the little, the small, and the big. Everybody should get ready for what God is planning to do for us this year, both physically, spiritually, financially, economically, and otherwise. What could happen this 2011? How could the lives of Zimbabweans change for the better uh, uh, from, a, from a money point of view, from a wealth point of view? The, 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 the only way that somebody's life can change, starting from Zimbabwe and any other place, is when the person have a mindset of entrepreneurship. Understanding what it is that you need to do so that your life can be better financially. And I believe that there are so many strategies that are being put in place for that to take place. Let's take COPAC, for example. 
it is something that needs to be set up and understood to the level where every Zimbabwean will be partakers of the things that God has deposited into this place to be a blessing to every one of us. That's number one. Number two, people need to start looking at investment that is going to last for a very long time. For the past few years, people were skeptical about investing in Zimbabwe, starting businesses, st standing out and doing something new. A lot of them were afraid we don't know what is going to happen because there is going to be an election or there's, uh, the economy is not yet stable. We have tested the multi-currency uh, situation and it is working. And people should look forward now to do going into businesses with the mindset of longevity. Not something that you want to start and wait and see what will happen tomorrow. But something you need to do, knowing very well that you are going to put all the necessary resources required to make it something that will last for a very long time. Okay. That is what we are looking at. Okay, thanks, Pastor Nick. Let me, let me turn to Pastor uh, 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 Chirise. You are the founder yes. of Legacy, Legacy International Private School. Yes. And you founded that school out of adversity, basically. Literally. And, okay. If you can mm. just relate very briefly to how mm. you started the school mm -hmm. and how other Zimbabweans who are watching this program right now mm. can begin to do things this mm. 2011 mm. that could change their lives for the better. Mm. And super, not just change my life, but change the life of families, communities, and the life of a nation. Sure. I think it comes from a burden, a realization that within each one of us is ingrained the ability, the capacity, the desire, and the will to succeed. Not only to succeed, but to make a difference in somebody's life. Each one of us says what it takes to make a difference in somebody else's life. So for me, legacy was born out of a burden. You know, when the whole education system was crumbling you know i was a teacher for 20 years and mostly in private schools and uh, 20 I years yes oh you look like you're 25 <laughs> thank you <laughs> don't make me blush but thank you <laughs> but thank you so no. you know uh, having left the education um system gone into into the private sector I was the national director of transworld radio for a couple of years but you know this burden for education which i know is key to the success of any nation for any we can talk entrepreneurship we talk investment whatever it is that we're talking about the basic foundation is education and so i felt that it was really a call practically a call of obedience um, and so i started with seven children believe it or not in a cottage in borodale <laughs> yes with uh, people coming to you know look at the school and say so where is the school you know, and then i'll show them <laughs> <laughs> and then and I would Hallelujah. show them this cottage with these uh, few desks and, uh, you know, and like I've always quoted, you know, the smart ladies who just walk away with their stilettos and it would be very painful. But, you know, the tenacity I was talking about, you know, the resilience, the determination to make a difference in my nation was what really pushed me. So for the whole of uh, that first year, there were only seven students, you can imagine. In fact, we started with two. And uh, I thank God for those two that believed in me because one of them is someone who walked in and said, oh, it's you, Pastor Chiriseri. I know you're a woman of excellence. And so I know this school is going to succeed. And I, I've, I've, I've remained uh, very grateful to that lady. But anyway, cutting a long story short, we subsidized that school. My husband and I subsidized from the savings that we had. He used to run Brands, uh, uh, brands uh, Butchery, so we had some savings, but this was before everything just collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thereafter, it literally was hand to mouth, but um, um, again, it was this deep desire to serve my nation. Where, where is the school now? Where, where the, is school the school is now at 26 Connaught Road and, and in, how many in Avondale. Oh, we're talking just under 200 and now. This is a private school? This is a private school. It's a Christian um, it's a, it's a multicultural, co-educational, Christian, private school. So we have up to grade five. We've been growing one grade a year. But the minute we get land, which I sense is very soon, we should be able to open it up for more How does people. it compare to other private schools that are in Zimbabwe? A very highly so. In fact, some of our competitors recommend their overflow to us. You know, we have schools, uh, you know, I won't mention names, but uh, they have a very high regard for, you know, for, for Legacy International School. And we don't see ourselves as a competitor, but as people that have come to complement the efforts. To yes. Okay, the efforts I'm going to come back and ask you mm -hmm. when we come back from the break, mm -hmm. how 
the people can learn from your example mm. as an individual who said, I will do this, mm. and how they can take that determination at the beginning of this year to mm. say, I will do this this year, when no matter it's starting with one student or two students. Exactly. We're taking a short break. My name is Superman Diwanzira. My guest tonight, uh, Pastor Petunia Chiriseri, as well as uh, Pastor Nico Hizu. We're coming back after the short break. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Superman Diwanzira. My guest tonight, Pastor Petunia Chiriseri. She is the co-founder of His Presence Ministries, as well as uh, the uh, founder of uh, Legacy uh, International Private School, as well as Pastor Nico Izu. Yeah, Pastor Nico Izu is from the Redeemed House of God, and of course, you all know about his School of Wealth. Is that still running? Yes, sir. Actually, we are setting up. We are starting off again by the first Saturday of February in 2011, and the registration is already on. And we are looking forward to kickstarting again to set up a new level of uh, instruction to desiring and aspiring entrepreneurs for 2011. Have you met successful business people out of your program? Definitely so. We, we do. We have a lot of people in our efforts that can boast today that School of Wealth changed their lives. It's not something that we talk about. It's something that we know that is taking place. Okay. Uh, let me go back to uh, uh, Pastor uh, Petunia Chisteri. How can other Zimbabweans who are... Uh, Thinking right now, the year has just started, it's a brand new year, they have a determination to do something. How can they be like you, who started a school behind uh, their own house and the mm. ladies with stilettos would say, Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Walk away. <laughs> yes. Um, it's always important to equip yourself. Step number one. Uh, like Pastor uh, Nick says, if you can get to places like Empretech. I'm an Empretech. I was trained at Empretech, and I understand the value of um, equipping yourself. You literally empower yourself with knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge is power. So one of the things I learned at Empretech is this, that, and they need to pay me for this free advertising <laughs> for them. One of the things I learned. But you must by paying me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of the things I learned is that uh, business is about meeting a need. You want to be a successful. A business person, look for a need. Meet somebody's need. Okay, we can have businesses that also meet once. That's okay. But, you know, that's for people that are already established. Because, you know, when somebody has a choice, when somebody has to choose between spending money on a need and on a want, they will obviously meet, you know, their needs first before they meet their, their wants. So that is the first thing that I learned. But also the fact that planning is important you have to have a vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. This is 2011, so sit down, take your notebook, uh, get inspiration from the Holy Spirit. I mean, that is, a, that is a, a power that many Christians underutilize. The Holy Spirit speaks. He will give you an uncommon idea, an uncommon business idea. He will literally direct your steps. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So this is what I did. I sat down, had my old notebook, and I just took, Step by step, I wrote step by step what I need, what I saw first, and then I worked backwards. So what does it, what will it take, you know, for, for, for legacy to exist? You have to find premises. You have to register the company. You have to get licensing from, from the Minister of Education. You have to, research is another very, research and development are very critical in the development of any business. So find out what the needs are, but also find out ways of meeting that need, but also find out all the legal, legal requirements and all the, you know, local council authority requirements and so on. And the next thing after your plan, it is important to act. You know, I'm a pastor, super, and I can't tell you the number of business plans I've laid hands <laughs> over. <laughs> and a church on and Sunday. And then I was in the day. Mm, <laughs> a church on Sunday, I was saying, okay, this year, this coming year, we don't want to see any more plans. We want to see the money. Mm -hmm. Let's see the money. And the money comes when you put your plan to action. In other words, you pick yourself up. You're not always feeling like it. Discouragement, I can tell you, is, the, is, is, is just one characteristic of every entrepreneur. But you have to understand that courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is overcoming fear. Courage is speaking to yourself and say, you know what? I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me, I can get it done. But most importantly, super, innovation. 
creativity. It is critical. Think outside the box. Don't just try and imitate so-and-so because so-and-so did it this way, then it, it may not work for you. So for me, thinking outside the box was, was what worked. Yes, having Very a pioneering yeah. anointing, a pioneering spirit, aggression. You just have to, like I said, have a bulldog type anointing. <laughs> then you can do it. Let me, let me turn yeah. to you, Pastor Nick. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all very well to speak this wonderful, inspiring language and quote the various verses that, that back it up. People watching right now that say the year has started, and I want to do what uh, uh, Pastor Chiriseri is saying. I want to do what Pastor Nick is saying, but I don't have the resources. How do you address the problem of somebody who says, yes, I've got the business plans. Yes, I want to redefine my, my goals in 2011. But where do I start? I don't have the resources. Um, I have three options for that answer. I'm going to start with, uh, with no, the first one. The first one is that we have to understand is that we are living in an environment where it has been very difficult for people to access funds to start their businesses. But the first person, the group of people I will talk to is I'm going to talk to the government. It is very important that we set up a system that will be able to finance the ordinary man that is trying to rise up tomorrow to set up something. The, the, the sole trader of today becomes the, 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 the national entrepreneur of tomorrow. If there is a system whatsoever way possible to get this money we are talking about and make it accessible and available to these small and medium enterprises that are rising up, the sole trader that is in the village that has something to do but doesn't have the resources to start. I believe the government can create an avenue for such people with brilliant ideas to access these funds. Secondly, we all know this one. I believe that the banking sector is resurrecting. They are giving loans now. I don't know the system they are using, but I believe that somebody that has the capacity to assess such loans can approach the bank and do so. And finally, on the personal level, which I always talk to people and I always teach in the School of Wealth, I tell people, if you want to get resources from outside you and it's not available, should your dream die because the resource is not coming from outside? I believe that there are certain resources that are coming from the inside also. The, the woman, the widow woman that her husband passed, Away, who was a, a, the husband was a prophet, passed away and left her in debt with her two children. The debt collector came to get the children to cover for the debt. She went to a prophet and asked, what can I do? The prophet didn't ask her to go to the bank. She told, she asked, he asked her, what do you have at home? The woman said, I had a bottle of oil. He said, your, your turnaround is in that bottle of oil. For the person that is watching right now, there might be something of value in your house, which is which can turn your situation around. There are so many uh, liabilities we bought and thought were assets, which you can easily sell off to start your life in 2011. The mistake people make is that during Christmas period, they spend all. The bonus is calm. Nobody's thinking about investment. Everybody's thinking about what? Spending. We buy new shoes and new clothes and new cars and new furniture. And generally, you discover you back to square one, where you left yourself last year. Maybe you need to look around and say, okay, this has got to go, this has got to go, this has got to go. And then make sure that you use that resources to invest into business that will last for a very long time. Don't get into business you don't understand. That's why I run a school where I teach people the secrets of success.